Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to start off with this video by saying thank you. Thank you for deciding to take a moment out of your day to tune into this next edition of Stockholm Syndrome, otherwise known as a Warframe Guide, in which I'm going to be dressed as a blessing trinity here to bless all your sins away. Don't ask why I'm wearing this, because I don't rightly know myself. Just figure that Twitch is a very weird, wondrous thing where stupid things happen. Now I say Stockholm Syndrome because today's stream, well, this wasn't my personal choice, but due to shenanigans that happened on the Twitch chat side of things, I am forced to make this video. The mirage. Uh, now I know a lot of you out there are going to throw bricks at me for not liking her, but I don't like mirage. Jimmy? Jimmy, I see you over there on that brick. You put that down right now. Now, I'm going to start right off by saying Mirage is by no means bad. She is, in fact, a stupendously powerful frame. I am just not personally too keen on her playstyle, as it leaves much to be desired in terms of fluidity and general interestingness of what actually happens with her abilities. And something about it just kind of rubs me the wrong way, but... You know what? I know a lot of people who really love this sexy, hallucination-inducing beast of a frame. So Mirage is one of those frames that can be a little bit of a we is a little bit weird to understand, as from the outside, you would sort of expect her to be rather squishy, and more of a glass cannon, if you will. And at base level, she kind of is, being the fact that she that along with frames like Ivara and Loki, she has one of the lowest base, he base health pools of almost any frame in the game. However, what she does bring to the table is buffs and unique mechanics and also utilizing the, uh, these mechanics you'll find she really does live up to the themes of her jestery appearance laying traps blinding creating a party for one that can synergize with different weapons there's a lot that goes into this it's just a shame that none of it has a bit of, it, it's very much indicative of what warframe used to be when she was first incepted abilities that don't really uh, flow but have a lot of initial impact Mirage, just by base value alone, can be played in a couple of different manners. However, it is worth noting that to me and to most other players out there, there are generally two ways you can play her. The first way is where you focus much more on, rate, on duration and power strength to make your buffs as strong as possible, to then allow your potency to allow your self-play to take you through any mission that you would do. Then utilizing your crowd controls and some of the other potencies of your other abilities to then sustain you through those missions. The other player playstyle is a little bit more focused on having a bit more range and then acting as a support role, it's aiding your teams with buffs, utilizing augments, and has a bit more complexity to it but gives you a bit more satisfaction in knowing that you're actually making a difference to your team. Either way, depending which way you want to play Mirage, you're going to have a very strong frame and by no means is this a frame that is necessarily weak, she's just a little bit uninteresting in the whole playstyle compartment of things. Mirage is obtained from the Hidden Messages quest, which is obtained from completing the Sedna slash uh, Pluto Junction. I've played this game for five years, and I've still yet to complete this honestly, but it's a quest line similar to that of Limbo's, where the components of building her come at the end of each of the mission segments, and offer no real challenge for obtaining her, so you kind of just go through the notions of doing the missions, and you'll get the components, and then you just build them. Funny little tidbit is that she was one of the actual first frames that didn't require an Oricon style, and instead required a Argon Crystal instead to make. The passive of Mirage is a little bit on the dull side. It's basically faster slide speed by 50% and faster movement speed whilst you're in the air. And that is quite literally it. There's, <laughs> there's really nothing else to it, honestly. It's probably one of the most underwhelming passives in the entire game. It makes me feel as though we might even get a rework for Mirage eventually where her passives and certain flowiness of her abilities are reworked. Kind of like how Nezha's was back in the day. Moving on to the abilities, starting with Hall of Mirrors. Something about these guides I've done recently about frames being rather lonely and needing someone of their own, su summoning their own friends, it would seem. Mirage summons four copies of herself that feels like you've just walked into a Hall of Mirrors for 25 seconds. These clones mimic your actions and movements and do not disappear until the timer on the ability runs out. These clones will essentially shoot 
an attack the way you do, dealing 20% of to the total damage of that weapon, which can be improved by modding for power strength, and can offer a rather potent way to up the damage you put out, and really you should have these active at any given time, as there's really no reason not to. This is also where weapon synergy can be quite nice, as mixing in a good weapon, such as the lens, or any beam-based weapon, can really ramp up the damage even further. Back in the day, Cyanoid Simulor used to be one of the main things to do here, but nowadays, anything that has a good projectile or good AoE potency can really up the damage even further. However, something to keep in mind, it is only the two closest clones to the way you're firing that will actually shoot. So realistically, if you have no power strength, you'll gain a 40% damage uh, benefit from having two of them shooting. One has 20, one has 20%, so that's 40% damage of the weapon you're firing. However, keep in mind, only a maximum of two of the holograms are able to fire projectiles at any given time from the primary or secondary weapons. The total hologram damage will be redistributed among the active holograms. Each active hologram will inflict 40% of the projectile's weapon's total damage, hence 20% for one, 20% for the other one that's firing. However, using glaives, gun blades, and weapons with special fire mechanics such as the Xenostar will cause all clones to use that passive. So again, weapon synergy is key here. So, TLDR here, have a stronger weapon, do more damage with the clones, also that using your sleight of hand will also let your clones cast the same ability, but with reduced effect. Their duration is then affected by ability duration, so you'll always want to have some kind of duration in your build, whether that's continuity or whatever else. As most of Mirage's abilities are benefited from duration, you'll probably have a lot of duration in your builds anyway. And let it be known that if you use something like the Cyanoid Simulor, you're likely going to give yourself a lot of eye cancer, so be careful on the weapons you choose, as this can make some rather funky particle effects. The augment of this ability is called Halls of Malevolence, which gives you a flat buff for every enemy you kill, whilst your doppelgangery girls are active. This stacks up to 10 times, giving a 5% buff for each kill. So with 10 stacks, you gain a 50% damage buff to your lovely little doppelgangers. If you intend on using your doppelgangers or you've got good range, you're basically going to always want this as it is just a lovely amount of damage to have additionally on top of everything else. Uh, keep in mind that if your doppelgangers do run out and the duration wears off, then you do need to rebuild the stack after you've recast the ability. The ability. Now, moving on to the second ability, Sleight of Hand. When cast, all objects within 40 meter radius will be rigged for explosives for 18 seconds. As well as then summoning a lovely tempting little jewel at the target location within 60 meters. So, in short, if you aim within a 60 meter radius, you create a 40 meter radial ring, which anything inside of it will basically go and et told to F itself. The jewel itself will interact with enemies within 12 meters. Any enemy within 12 meters will be tempted by the jewel to move up close to it. Any enemy that goes within 12 meters will cause the jewel to explode, dealing a mild stagger and causing 200 blast damage to enemies within an 8 meter explosive radius. Only the charm and explosion radius are affected by range, and the detonation radius is not. And of course, the duration of the blind slash stagger is then affected by duration. The damage of the jewel explosion and the sabotage explosions is then affected by ability strength. So there's a little bit of a depth here that can really differentiate and really plays the idea of the situational nature of Mirage. As depending on the objects that your two effects will depend on the effect the trap has on that object. There's a lot of different effects here, and for the sake of simplicity and not making this video last five hours, I will bring up a little table on the screen here showing you what affects what and what the traps will end up then doing as it is just end up being a lot of busy talk, but if can pretty much synergize with having a Necros as the more items you have and the more pickups that are available, then you have more objects to sabotage and more things that will then explode. To really make the most of this, you want to make sure you have your clones active, because as mentioned in the first ability, they will summon their own mini version of this when you initially cast it. So, again, this ability is a little bit situational, likely that you're not going to be using it too frequently, but it can be nice to have a bit of crowd control, to have a bit of damage in there, and to distract enemies from anything else. But honestly, it's probably the least used ability in uh, Mirage's kit, even if it is quite gimmicky and kind of fun to watch enemies uh, get a bit distracted. The augment for this can turn this ability from being a bit lackluster into actually being very usable, as it really ups the potency and adds to the theme of this ability in the first place. So 
the augment for this is called Explosive Legend Main, and really just pushes the envelope with the theme as mentioned. This causes ammo and orb pickups to be turned into traps, dealing 500 damage with a 100% status chance. The damage of this is then affected by ability strength whilst the status chance is not, and depending on the item converted will depend on the damage type it deals. Ammo and ammo drops are converted into cold damage, affinity orbs are to toxin, energy orbs are to electricity, and health orbs to heat damage. Really look at this like some kid who's thrown Lego all over the floor, because if anyone's ever stood on Lego, that's basically the equivalent pain you'll feel when being subjected to going near one of these items. The third ability, and probably one of the most pivotal abilities in Mirage's kit. This is a situational buff that once cast will do one of two different things depending on the environmental lighting. Yes, that is right, you have no control over how this actually affects you. Which is why I mentioned it's very situational. If the area is light, then she gains up to a 200% weapon damage buff, or if it's dark, so if we go into the shadow here, she gains up to a 75% damage reduction buff. This buff then lasts for 25 seconds, and much like the theme of how we've been seeing her working so far, helps compound the idea that a lot of Mirage can be very- a lot of Mirage's playstyle is very situational, as this will either help turn you into a more of a glass cannon, or help you survive three bullets rather than two. Maximum damage and damage reduction are affected by ability strength. Damage reduction cannot exceed 95%, however, so keep that in mind. So if you really want to be able to pump out more damage, then make sure you are in a light area, or if you're in dark emissions, use this as much as possible to stay alive. As a final little tidbit, if you really want to help give yourself the damage buff with this, you can self-conflagrate yourself and turn yourself on fire, because when you are affected by a heat proc, you actually gain the full maximum amount of damage buff you can gain from your three. So if you have something like a javelock, or you're fighting against fire enemies and you're caught on fire, then you're going to lose the mitigation, or you're going to gain the maximum possible buff you would gain from damage. Total Eclipse is the augment for this ability. Now, this is one of those pivotal parts of Mirage, whether you decide whether you want to be more supportive or focus on your own damage, as this augment allows your allies to benefit from your Eclipse and then murder the crap out of everything with that huge buff they gain, like so. And this is pretty nice, as, as bonus weapon damage or survivability can be great for team play, especially in survival missions and the like, as range, as if you build for range, then this will affect your allies as well, and it's really the only point where you'll actually want to build for range in the first place, as then range will supplement all your other crowd controls and other range-based abilities as well. So, range for support, duration for self-play. Prism is Mirage's fourth and final ability. Mirage summons a disco ball that fires out lasers dealing damage to enemies within 30 meters. Each laser hitting an enemy will deal 250 radiation damage per tick while Mirage is in the shadows, or ramp up to 500 radiation damage if Mirage is in the light. When the prism has traveled its duration, it will explode, blinding enemies within 25 meters for 15 seconds. This is an ability that looks really cool, but is more about filling in when you have spare energy and want a little bit of CC to go with everything else you're doing, and maybe to deal with large waves of enemies, and actually can be really nice for, con for closed in areas or for lower level mission clearing. The duration of this ability is affected by ability duration, the lasers emitted from the ball are affected by range, and the damage is unaffected by ability strength and is capped at 200% damage based on the lighting of the area you're in. Surprise! I'm back in my weird nun outfit, but finally we're on to the modding segment of the video. Again, please keep in mind with these modding segments, they are entirely designed as personal preference. I have not played Mirage all too much, and this is one of those frames that I've had the least amount of experience with, so there's very likely better builds out there. However, these are some builds that I have found worked well, and at least played to the nuances of the way Mirage plays. The main build, which is focused more about the self-play, with duration and everything else, is going to be focusing more on your own personal endeavours. Now, with any build that we go into, keep in mind it is personal suggestion that you do your own exploration, find what works for you, and find how to build uh, to the way you want to work. As always, aura mods are entirely personal preference, use what works for you. I would definitely recommend uh, energy siphon is quite good for this as well, as you are going to be moderately heavy on the casting side of it, but again, that is all personal preference. As you will notice with uh, Mirage, Mar Mirage is very heavy on power strength requirements, as more power strength will equate to mm, stronger buffs and stronger ratios of damage into your abilities, and then stronger building of those ratios as well. So, right off the bat, we have 
as much power strength as feasibly possible. You can even go with more than this if you can try. Uh, however, Blind Rage, Augur Secret, Intensify, and Power Drift are what I've decided to go for with this. This gives a very potent buff right off the bat towards your three, as well as being able to then subsequently help your one as well and the damage scaling therein. Now, you want, again, a lot of duration from things like continuity. Uh, you could, in theory, exchange narrow-minded for Augur uh, Message just to allow the... Uh, your, you'd have a bit more range to help with your four. Personal preference on that one, uh, Mirage, most builds from Mirage are very former heavy, so this could be something you sacrifice out to replace uh, with Augur Message. Um, although her abilities, you are cast heavy, you don't necessarily need efficiency. I see a lot of people out there playing without it, so Streamline is sort of a personal preference thing. Uh, you could definitely get rid of this in place of an Augment, or even uh, some other abilities with more power strength, or even more duration, should you so choose. Then, to help with the survivability, seeing as you are very lackluster in health from the word go, uh, you want at least one survivability mod. You do have a very low base amount of health, so Vitality isn't going to help you tremendously, but again, it is something to help you survive. Uh, you could, in theory, then aim for adaptation, but you want something to help keep you going. The idea is realistically is that you want you don't necessarily want to rely on survivability because you can just rely on your raw damage to wipe the map before anything even gets close to you. Um, but the more comfortable you'll feel, the more likely you are to get rid of the survivability mods to then focus more on raw damage and buffing your allies. And the second build, this sort of deviates more towards supporting your allies with the Total Eclipse Augment, or maybe even the Legend Main. Having a bit more focus towards range with Stretch and Augur Reach allows your four to hit uh, from further away, and allows your three to also then affect your allies from a further distance as well. You still want power strength, and ideally you would probably want as much as possible, so even getting rid of Vitality here could be useful. Uh, you want that power strength to make your buffs as strong as possible. Again, keeping in mind you cannot go above a 95% damage reduction, regardless of how much power strength you build. Then you have the continuity and the message to keep the duration, not putting on narrow-minded to make sure you keep that range going, and then, of course, uh, power drift and intensify, and then blind range for the power, power strength. I think I've said power strength once already. Either way, power strength and range with this is what you're after. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm professional at these videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then finally, as with all these guides, we always have a new player-friendly build. All of these mods are obtainable from very transparent locations, whether that be the bounties or from just generally playing the game for uh, the early stage. Uh, these are all mods that are very easily modded, and this is probably more of a 1-0 to zero form of build, if that. Uh, you have your Streamline for the efficiency to make sure you're able to cast more frequently. You've got Hunter Adrenaline to make sure you are more energy efficient, as this will give you a bit of a comfort to maybe make a few mistakes with your casting and then still make sure you're maintaining energy. You've got Vitality and Steel Fiber for the survivability, Intensify, Augur Secrets, and Power Drift for the power strength, as again, you always want as much power strength as possible. And then you've got Stretch for the range. This is sort of a more well-rounded build to help you get used to playing Mirage. Then you can sort of deviate into however you else you would want to play her. And that's the guide. Probably not my best guide I'm ever going to put out, but let's face it, I don't like Mirage, so uh, it's never going to be the best guide I ever produced. At the very least, I do hope this has covered all the base elements you would need to know to play Mirage. If you've liked it, make sure you let me know that. If you've not liked it, then tell me how much of a shitter I am in the comments down below, and leave suggestions for other frames and other things you would like to see guides on. Again, you're going to notice that there are new types of videos being released, whether that's Warframe related or not, and realistically at this stage, we're going to maintain a consistency towards producing at least two Warframe videos a week, and then uploading highlights of our Twitch VODs for the story games we do on our Twitch side of things. Speaking of Twitch, if you want to join these lovely dancing Ivaras next to me, you can check out the description down below and join us on Twitch as we record these on stream to get you involved and as a way of emphasizing community, because let's face it, community is what makes Warframe. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see all you naughty boys in the next video. Ta-ra! Now I must go and help the people repent!